Hello, I'm Michael Pierce, and this is The Human Condition. Today our topic is, will brain damage show on an MRI? Well, the problem with this statement is, what is brain damage to you? Brain damage to a clinician is a little different than brain damage to a researcher, which is different than brain damage to a psychologist, which is different than brain damage to a mom or a dad of a child, or someone who is a layperson who looks at brain damage differently. If we have truly ablative brain damage, which means destructive, it means that if you were to do an autopsy, you would see damaged cells under a microscope. You would be able to say these cells are damaged. They are destroyed or damaged, or they have some problem or pathology with them. And there are many kinds of pathology. There are many ways that cells can go wrong and look abnormal under a microscope and not be dead and be dead. So generally, brain damage that is truly ablative and destructive, which is called necrotic or dead cells, will show up on an MRI. There are other types of cancer cells that will show up uh, on an MRI if you use contrast. Contrast media is gadolinium, and it's injected into people before an MRI sometimes. Usually for non-structural problems, it's usually much more for you know, um, metastases and cancerous processes than it is for, say, structural things like a disc bulge or, or a mechanical problem or a, a bone, if we're just looking for fractures or something like that or dislocation. The problem is a lot of people react to gadolinium and they have side effects from gadolinium, but it is a contrast medium that can help show us changes in the brain. So with or without contrast, the MRI should show true damage to the brain. Now we get into the question of what about other types of problems? If you have a calcium deposit in your brain of some kind, where there's been a calcium deposit in an artery or a calcium deposit from aging, which does happen, you'll see those on an MRI a little bit, but you'll see them better on a CT because CT shows minerals better. It shows, it shows calcium and minerals and metals better than an MRI would with less distortion because MRI is distorted by metals if there was you know, metal in your, in your body. The uh, further piece about damage showing on an MRI is um, if you have ischemic damage, which means your brain is not dead, but you have areas of, of reduced blood flow or altered blood flow, those show up really, really well on QEEG. QEEG is a way of processing images that's a little better than EEG for this purpose. EEG is the basic brain waves or electroencephalography, and that's the method that's used in, in traditional medicine and, and modern medicine for sleep studies and for epilepsy studies. That's the main purpose of the EEG today. However, there is quite a bit of literature that, that is pointing to how QEEG, or quantitative electroencephalography, which is a little different, is very, very good and superior to plain old EEG for measuring ischemic areas. Now, the reason for that is that an EEG looks at just the brain waves, just the squiggles that are made by the old ink pen on paper as it passes under the ink pen. And now today we have computers, we don't have those ink pens anymore, but the uh, ischemic areas can be shown up by the processing of the quantitative analysis of all those data. So when you take a computer and you analyze all those squiggles, you can start to analyze really where there's ischemic events based on slow alpha waves in the brain and other, other signals and, and where those signals are. And you can begin to, to visualize where there are ischemic areas of the brain that are not dead, but that are heading for something like a stroke or something like a transient ischemic attack or something like a very bad psychological episode where a person doesn't have complete control and command of their faculties. So um, between MRI, CT, uh, EEG, and QEEG, we can get a good uh, image of the brain. And then lastly, I'll say ERP, or event-related potentials, are measurements of the brain under a task. So EEG is just looking for a seizure or sleep disorder. QEEG is looking for a longer-term resting state of the brain where the person is, is being measured for minutes at a time. And then lastly, ERP measures their event-related potentials under a task. <laughs> <laughs>